Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to the Value of Truth Ministries. I am Brian Price, and we are here December 21st of 2014, just four days away from Christmas. I hope you guys are going to be spending Christmas with your loved ones, family, friends, or whoever, perhaps your dog, if you can only call him your loved one in this world. At least you'll be spending it with somebody you care about. That's what I always say. But anyways, I wanted to show you this particular video that I think is absolutely shocking. And it is perhaps one of the most disturbing videos I've ever seen on YouTube. And that is this particular former Satanist giving her testimony in regards to the secret underground world of Satanism. Now, we do know that the Church of Satan does exist out in the open. However, its popularity is not quite as uh, widespread, say, as Catholicism or Christianity in general. And so we know that Satanism is not as popular. However, there exists what we see as an underground world of Satanism. And we call it Luciferias, Luciferianism. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Luciferianism, uh, Satanism, whatever you want to call it, whether they worship Lucifer or the devil or Satan, it really makes no difference. Um, Lucifer and Satan are one and the same. You can read in Isaiah chapter 14 that uh, God describes Lucifer as exalting or wanting to exalt himself above the throne of God, saying that he will be like the Most High. And God says, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. And so I'm reminded from this video, particular video, I'm reminded of the former Illuminati member, Svali. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but you should do some research on Svali. And I remember years ago reading about her testimony and how she and her husband were high-ranking officials. Well, her husband in particular was a high-ranking official in the Navy, and they were both secret Illuminati members, and they worshipped Lucifer. They pledged allegiance to Lucifer and he who is to come. Uh, in my opinion, that meant the Antichrist, the one who is to come, who is to rule the nations. And she explained in her very testimony how uh, a priest, a Catholic priest in the Vatican sacrificed a baby to Lucifer in the Vatican, as crazy and far-fetched as that sounds, that's her testimony. You need to read about it. It's very interesting. Um, and that was perhaps the, you know, one of the most disturbing testimonies I've ever heard about or read. But this one that you're about to see is even far more disturbing than Svali's testimony. And uh, they don't even give this girl her real name. I imagine because she's afraid for her life and you can see the or you can listen to the interview and just see how old it is it, it's very old uh, made perhaps in the 80s or so and uh, she explains how she was raped on a daily basis how people were kidnapped and used for human sacrifices and even their children were bred for sacrifices and she breaks down into tears on camera uh, as she tells her story that little babies were uh, brutally murdered for the uh, for the sake of a uh, excuse me for the sake of Satanism, all in the name of Satan. And I'm reminded of Scripture in which uh, the Bible says in Luke chapter four that the devil came to Jesus and tempted Jesus. And the Bible says that he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said, all these things will I give to you, for that is delivered unto me. If thou therefore wilt fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus responds with scripture saying, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. So Jesus overcame his temptation of receiving a temporal earthly kingdom for just a few short years on earth in exchange for his heavenly eternal crown. 
in which the Bible says that God highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, uh, of things in heaven and things under in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So even the knee of the devil has to bow to the name of Jesus. It is that highly exalted that every knee should bow of things in heaven and earth. And so Jesus rejected the temporal earthly crown for an eternal heavenly one, and he awaits his kingdom to return to earth. And so this video, getting back to the video, it reminds me of devil worship that even was proposed as far back as the book of Luke chapter number four, in which, uh, in which we see that Jesus was tempted himself to worship the devil. Um, so it's nothing new. It's been going on for thousands of years. And it's just, in this case, being exposed as it is in black and white. And it's very shocking because you have to wonder, do things like this really go on? Are there really people this sinister, this evil, this corrupt in the world? And the answer is yes, absolutely. There are devils in this world. And that's just the plain truth that the devil is is real he does exist and so do people who follow him so take a look at this video let me know what you think leave a comment god bless you um with a a girl we're going to call her name rebecca and uh she was an ex-satanist she's now a christian um but she shares a chilling testimony of what it was like when she was in uh this satanic cult right from childhood so watch now I was the fifth part of Satan, and my power that I ran with was, my element was fire, and you couldn't get any higher than what I was. I could move things without touching them, and I could make people stand away from me and command the demons to go get people and make them push, get pushed away. I could protect myself in that sort of way, and I really liked the power. You were taught concerning the things of the dark side of the supernatural at a very young age. Could you share some of that with us? I was really involved with the satanic church every day. Um, the high priest would come and get me, and they would uh, take me to the church, and they would um, they would violate me. But, and they would have, we'd have communion every day. And that consisted of blood and urine and semen and a black widow. And that was, yeah, an everyday part of my life. How did you feel about that? I felt really scared, but at the same time, I liked the power that I had, that they taught and I had inside of me, because everybody has gifts inside of them. And you can be influenced by the Holy Spirit or the familiar spirit. And I was totally influenced by the familiar spirit. I had Satanists around me constantly following me. You saw um, many very ugly things like animals get sacrificed, even humans and, and other really terrible things. Did it ever occur to you that this was evil? No, because I was so brainwashed at the time because when I was four years old, I was raped and molested by a high priest, and I knew nothing else of all that stuff, and I was just brainwashed with the Satanism and knowing that Satan was God and God was not real. Satan was God for me. And I thought, yeah, I was so numb to it, really. How did you view Christians back then? I hated them because they had no power like... I heard so many times that, you know, God was real and, and Jesus was so true, but I didn't see the power working throughout the church. In fact, I saw Satanists working also in the church, and Satanists tithe more than Christians do. One time I was sitting in a Benny Hinn conference, and I was being taught. I had two witches on either side of me teaching me how to put curses on Benny Hinn. And I saw a big, re big uh, light around him, and I didn't understand what I was seeing. I was seeing half men 
from the shoulders up, which were a representation of his angels at the time, because I think, yeah, that God was protecting me at the time. Or to see all that stuff would freak me out. And he looked up in the right, I was in the right-hand stage of the corner of the stage in the upper part, and he said, do you three witches, um, you two on the either side of me, you're going straight to hell, turn to Jesus, or you're going to burn in hell, and I know what you're doing, and then he pointed to me, and he said, you're going to get saved soon, and everybody started praying, and I felt like tingling all over my body and I freaked out and screamed and they had to escort me out of the stadium it was weird it was like I didn't understand why we were doing what we were doing because he yeah he had a, a pure light around him and like I said before I, I saw colors and he had a white light uh, like a bubble encased around him and I didn't understand why we were putting curses on him and they were like it was so brainwashed really what is the primary goal or purpose of Satanism yeah the pur their purpose is to rule the world what was your purpose my purpose was to get all the power that I could and to get as high up as I could you have explained to us that um, there was human sacrifice that went on inside of the satanic church and inside of satanic ritual. Can you tell us how this was done? How did they murder people? Yeah. All the children's posters that you see that are missing, um, they're pretty much dead. They have underground caverns in the mountains and they keep the children and the kids and the women and men there. And then at a certain time in mid-September, October, they take them out, and they're so... Remember when I told you I could make people get away from me? Like, they'd make the people so numb with uh, curses and stuff, and they'd also drug them up, and they'd take a sacrificial knife and they'd start from the chest and move all the way down to your abdomen. And then that's how they sacrificed and they collect the blood and they drink it. Um, when the mid-September through um, mid-November, they sacrifice babies and nothing but babies because they need the pure blood of the untainted children. And I was really I didn't understand what it was like. I just can't believe I'm seeing this. Every every year of my life, I've experienced that, and I was that was the hardest part for me. It's like hearing those babies literally scream and cry, and then seeing their blood flow. It was horrible. Rebecca, where did they get the babies? Yeah, they have mothers that are expecting that they hold in the in the church, and they also have people that they kidnap, and they impregnate them through whatever, and they get babies from everywhere. Why is it that no one knows this? Because there's Satanist in the police, force and also in the government, the army, they're everywhere. They're even on the council of, yeah, the represent representatives of the United States also. And they're silenced because this is not being exposed because they don't want it to be exposed. Because they're really good at lying and hiding things. Rebecca, what happens to the people that want to come out of Satanism? They get killed. They get followed. They get taken. They get sacrificed in front of the congregation of the Satanic Church. Why? 
because they know too much information about the Satanist and who their names and places of where they keep the people underground and they just know too much information. There's no, it's like I'm being in a gang or in a mafia. You don't get out alive without consequences. Is this difficult for you to talk about? It's really difficult because, yeah, I feel really, really scared because I don't know. I don't know how to tell everybody that's out there that I came out because I'm not sure if anybody's going to believe this because it's so much like a fantasy. Yeah, warfare is real. We're born into a war. And, yeah, you'd be very foolish to not to understand that because demons are real and people are influenced by bad...